Thanks for listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. I am your host, Mike Luke. We have got a lot to get to today. And uh, some players have entered the portal unexpectedly. Some players have not entered the portal unexpectedly. But let's talk. Uh, let's talk first and foremost about the latest news. Kylan Boswell has moved on from the University of Arizona. He has entered the transfer portal. Here's where I stand with Kylan Boswell. In that, first of all, he's not a bad kid at all. Uh, anybody that says he's a bad kid. They don't know what they're talking about. Now, did he have some focus issues that were probably impacted his play? Yes, absolutely. Um, wish him nothing but the best. But also, this came down to one thing, or well, two things, Jason Shear. There is a very real chance that Caleb Love could come back. And Arizona was just not comfortable going into next season with Caleb, or with uh, Kylan Boswell as a starter, period. Yeah, I mean, from Arizona's perspective, you know, we had speculated – that if Kylan came back, you couldn't have anything promised to him and you were going to have to be a little more strict in your approach. Yeah. Um, from what we've gathered in the last 48 hours or so, that's where this kind of came to a head. Jaden Bradley, I don't like using the word promise, but it was made very clear that this team wants to move forward with Jaden Bradley at point guard and Kylan would be competing for the other guard spot. If Caleb Love decides to come back, and keep in mind, Mike and I do not know if he's coming back, but if he comes back, uh, Caleb is a bench or Kylan is a bench player, right? And I can't, and, and there was no scenario, no scenario where Kylan Boswell was coming off the bench. Yeah, and honestly, I, I when I look back at the Kylan Boswell experience, listen. Uh, I think Lloyd, Lloyd, like I said, I always have to preface this because I'll get people on there to say, well, why would you ever critique Lloyd? I'll always say that I want Tommy Lloyd to be here for 30 years. I've seen the alternative. I know what it is. I've seen Kevin O'Neill. I've seen Whoa. other players. Yes, I know there was a cheap shot towards my guy, but I've seen it. So just because you critique somebody doesn't mean that you are necessarily, you know, bashing them or hating on them. That being said, what I will say is that you know, he was. I think that Kylan Boswell probably needed to have a little bit more of a stern hand given to him by his coach at some points. Not, I mean, not a, like like that, but, and that really never really happened. Um, whether it was off the court stuff, whether it was on the court play, he essentially knew going into every single game that I'm going to play at least 20 minutes and I can show up to the blackjack table and I will not necessarily, and I'm not going to get benched. And he was right. I think that there was a little bit of a disservice done to him there. That said, I think Tommy Lloyd is a, he's a smart guy. He learns from his, uh, I think he learns from things. He's a very introspective guy. And I think he just knew at the end, I can't go back into next season with him as a guaranteed starter. Yeah. I'll say this about Tommy and, and I like Tommy Lloyd. Obviously I, I don't share the complaints that some of the fan base does, but it is very clear at this point that he likes to learn that he is not just set in his ways. Right. After the Princeton game, he said, we need to get better in the backcourt and get tougher. He did and more athletic. They did that. They lost last year. Boswell played a larger role. Jaden was better, made that switch. Like, this is a guy that is going to look at what went wrong and try to address it. It may not always work, but there are a lot of coaches out there that are just like, I'm going to do what I do every year, and eventually it's going to work. Mm -hmm. We've seen and one I of those guess, coaches here. Yeah, and I think that Tommy deserves credit for it. and. Um, also, you know, yeah, like you, you needed some discipline and I think that the Arizona coaching staff realizes that. And I think this is one of those moves that is good for all parties. I think Kylan needs a new fresh start. I think Arizona needs a fresh start. I would not be surprised to see if Kylan makes the right school choice. If he's very successful next year would not shock me. It would not surprise, it would not surprise me in the least. Again, we've seen the, he has talent. And I think that was the part also that was, you know, a little frustrating. I mean, we've seen him against Duke where there were times when he was the best player on the court, but by the end of the season, 
Jaden Bradley was that dude. We're going to get to Jaden Bradley. We're going to get to Jaden Bradley here in a second and what he would provide, what he's going to provide for the University of Arizona. But I think honestly, sometimes things are just better, you know, just moving. Both sides are just better kind of moving on. I agree with you. I could see uh, Kylan Boswell doing very, very well somewhere else. And I also think that Arizona is going to do just fine without Kylan Boswell. That again, I think it's probably best that both sides moved on, Sheer. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it, it, I think in Kylan's perspective, and I know this sounds kind of dumb because it's, you could probably say it for a lot of players, he needs to make the right choice here, mm -hmm. right? Like, if he makes the wrong choice, like, let's, this is going to sound bad, but if he chooses a school with a big party atmosphere, right? Yeah. It's probably not the best choice. He should go to BYU. So he shouldn't go to UNLV. Kylan Boswell to BYU. All right. Yes. And uh, yes. All right. So Kylan Boswell to BYU. Jason Shearer is calling it right now. So Once he goes will... to BYU and averages like 22 points a game next season. The, oh, that, oh, it'd be absolutely fantastic. But again, like I said, we've seen it before. I would not, uh, I'm not writing the end of this, but I also think it, I also think that this was something that just had to happen because sooner or later, if you're just kind of allowed to do whatever you want, you kind of lose a little bit of control over, I don't want to say control over the program, but I think that, I think Tommy's got to be a little bit more stern. I get the Tom and I think that Tommy's going to learn from that. That's what I like about Tommy Lloyd. And so all these people out there, like I got somebody the other day that said, if Tommy Lloyd leaves Kentucky, it's because of you. No, dude, he doesn't care what I have to say. He literally couldn't possibly care less what I have to say. And at the same time, you know, really, if you're really leaving because of some dude on a podcast, that is not the uh, that is not the case. Now, we are going to talk about Jaden Bradley in a second, but we've got to get to the bad news. Mike's wearing all black, by the way, if you could tell. This is, well, yesterday was Black Monday. Dylan Anderson is left. This this one, there's not often that uh, Sheer and I are blindsided by something. Um, yeah, Dylan Anderson has left. I will say though that maybe Dylan walked so Kylan could crawl. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying maybe now. And uh, you know, Dylan Anderson. But joking aside, uh, Arizona's got a Arizona's got a roster spot to fill. I know I'm a little bit biased towards Dylan. Sheer doesn't really like Dylan, but man, this was a brutal off season for him. Dylan Anderson and Philly B in the same off season. Not good. Karma is definitely revisiting me, Sheer. Uh, yeah, yeah. You were Brielle told me when I was driving, and I tweeted, and within ten seconds, I was on the phone with you, and you were you were a disaster. You were a mess. You know what's weird about the whole thing with uh, Dylan Anderson, though, is that Dylan Anderson was Dylan Anderson was actually going to play. Dylan Anderson was going to play minutes next year, and he, um, you know, maybe it's because of his bike. I don't know exactly what happened, but there was something that happened in this last. Uh, there was something that happened because up until a few days ago, Dylan was very. Uh, it seemed like Dylan was very happy being here. I think he found out that you stole his bike. Do you think that uh, do you, now? Do you think that Dylan ends up at GCU with Duke Brennan? Uh, you know, I thought about this. If I'm Dylan, and I'm not saying this jokingly or not, like I'm not saying this jokingly at all, he should go to GCU or ASU. He close should. to home. Uh, he's close with his dad. Uh, it, it's playing. He could be a stretch. He could be Kevin Durant or Dirk Nowitzki. He could be a stretch four, or whatever. Like I would absolutely, one hundred percent go to one of those. Like. He is another guy. Like, if he tries to go to like Kansas, that's stupid. Well, I mean, no, come on, dude. Stupid. Nobody from Kansas is taking Dylan. They took Mitch Lightfoot. I mean, they may. You could take Dylan and say, "Hey, sit on the bench for for." You know what I mean? You'll play ten minutes. I'm just saying. Like, yeah, that's true. portal's weird, man. The that's portal's true. weird. There's a lot of guys from the portal that wind up at schools they have no business going to. Right. Yes. All right. Now, exactly. Now, Zona Germany. We appreciate our friends in Germany. Our friends in Germany. Uh, we assume you are in Germany. If you're not, now again, the only thing I'm going to say about the Tommy Gun with this is that so far the early returns on the internet or the uh, for or the uh, Euro recruiting has not been great. I think that's fair to say. Uh, from Adama Ball to Philly B to uh, Henry to Conrad to Paulius Morauskas, we're not exactly getting contributors here yet, Sheer. Although I do think Kreve is going to be a monster. Yeah, I get it. It was funny because you we we talked about this the other night, and you're like, "Well, it's not as bad as I thought it was." There's not really that big of a, you know what I mean? Like kind of all for five on contributors so far. Yeah, Although previous one for six. Right. So it's like, 
you know, if, if and then you wonder, like, okay, Morauskis is probably going to go somewhere and be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Is that like a failure on Tommy's part? Yeah, and Adama Ball's good as well. Right. It, it's probably the you right wrong eval. on Adama Ball, by the way. You were wrong it's on probably, Adama Ball. Yeah, it's probably the right eval, but not the right eval for Arizona, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Now, let's get to some Jaden Bradley, because I got a lot of thoughts about Jaden Bradley. Um, all right, no. Uh, Jervis Williams with the, uh, the, the boss bashing. Um, I don't know like that anybody, I think that it's just better for people to, I think it's just better for both sides to move on. I mean, he, you know, had some issues here and he can still be good. I think it's just best for both sides to move on. I actually, I'm rooting yeah. for him. I, I, I hope he does well. Yeah. There's no reason I'll, to like, I'll be honest with you. I do not root for Kirk Creesa. I do <laughs> not root for Kirk Creesa. I hope Kirk Creesa misses every shot he I, ever takes. I think we need to emphasize, like, Kylan's not a bad kid. He's immature. Right. He's right. not He's a bad kid. Like, I've never yeah. talked to Kylan and been like, man, this kid's an ass. Never. Right. Never have. Right. Yeah, I get that. Okay, now. By the way, Philly B, I saw the little Santa Clara. Uh, from what I understand, this is fluid. 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 Utah State is the leader for Philly B. Ooh. Is Philly B is not LDS, is he? Uh, No. But Utah what? State's not either. What? Uh. The uh, Mike hating on Kerr more. Than, no, the reason I didn't like Kerr is because he did stuff. First of all, he did a lot of stuff that he knew he shouldn't have been doing. He got penalized yeah. for it. He was also he was also a bigger problem behind the scenes than Kylan was. Kerr, Kerr's, I, look, I talk to Kerr all the time, or I used to, right? Like, mm-hmm. you would get annoyed by it in a way. Kerr was an ass. He would admit that he was an ass. Like, right. you know, like he was. Like, he just was. That's Kerr. That's his personality. And so, I have no problem with players talking, but you better be good. Don't go one for 14 and be talking as you're going off the court. That was my biggest problem with him. All right. Now, can I also say something to you before you move on? There's a lot of course. people that are freaking out and saying the program is bleeding. They're losing everyone. They have lost no one that of, I'm trying to say, I love Umar. Krebus probably in Arizona's mind is not a big drop off. Colin Boswell was very, was bad, bad. At a lot of points last year. If Arizona can't find a replacement for Kylan Boswell in the portal, then there's bigger issues than we thought. Wait, of. Wait gonna be fine. We already have the replacement. We are going to talk about it because you still was- need a backup guard. That's my point. All right. Well, wait a second. Conrad Martinez isn't the guy. Uh, I I would doubt it. I'm, I've I've asked my sources. Hopefully, I I find out by the end. I would assume that Arizona needs a guard. It could be a point or a combo. I would assume it's more of a point guard. A four man and a backup five. Right. Okay. Now, now, okay. Now, Kylan, or let's oh, not Kylan Boswell, Circle K. Circle K. Let's talk Circle K for a second. Sheer, when did you go to Circle K last? Be honest. Be honest. I'm dead serious. I went yesterday. You did? You go? What'd you get? Uh, I got gas. All right. Check it out. Circle K. Join Inner Circle for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Be part of the Inner Circle with the great Jacob Franklin as well. And, hmm, what do we got? The Arizona Lottery. Sure, you're a man of the people by the people. This has always been established from the very beginning. This is true. My goal is to win the lottery to give back. You know? Yes, exactly. Why, you would not yeah. take. You would not take one dime of that Arizona lottery. You would give it back to the kids. Here's what I would do. First thing I would do is I would buy you a Del Taco franchise. Second thing I would do is give it all back to the kids. That's what it's about. That's what it is about. But again, the Arizona lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's all about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. All right. Now, Jaden Bradley. I am a bigger fan of Jaden Bradley than you are, Jason Shear. I love Jaden Bradley. No, no, you are. You are. I like Jaden, but you like Jaden. I really like Jaden. I look at Jaden Bradley, and I don't understand why he can't be Jamal Shedd. I just said it. I don't understand why he can't eat. Now, listen, I'll say this. He doesn't have the vision that Jamal Shedd does, but I think defensively, he is an absolute monster. He's built similarly. He can get into the paint. You saw that. He's got a big dog in him. Well, like a big dog, like a Doberman pincher inside of him as well. I mean, I I like Jane Bradley. Why can't he be Jamal Shedd? (laughs) Take your time. (laughs) Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I think Jamal, I mean, you're talking about a guy that a lot of people think is the best point guard in the country. 
He averaged uh, as a sophomore, he averaged 10, 5, and 2. Yeah, that's fine. I think he could do that. Right. I think Shed's a dog. That's that's the thing. Like, was jaded. Yeah. I'm not, I, I just, I'm trying to give, I'm trying to do that, help you do that thing where, like, you make that jump from, like, good player to, like, this dude's going to be the best point guard in the country next year. <laughs> like, right. Uh, he's good though. Like I have no problem Arizona giving him the point guard spot every game. I really right. don't. I, I completely understand Tommy Lloyd because he was, I would say what the last 12 games of the year, Jaden Bradley was elite, like mm-hmm. elite. I mean, he was right. really good. And so you're like, okay, what happens when you get consistent minutes as well? Right. So if you're like Tommy, you're like, you know what? I can do that. Let's put him in the point. Now we got to see if Caleb love is coming back, but you need a backup. I, I like Conrad. You need a backup, but you know when you're looking at the roster and you're like, okay, I, I feel good about the point guard position with Bradley. I'm okay. I feel, with it. I feel very good, and also I think that this guy is a. And we're talking about dogs. Sheer is oh, L Bloom. You're right. Sheer slept on JB all season. This is yeah. Very- but you know what? At the end of the day, you're uh, you're you're man enough to admit you made a I'm mistake. I'm man enough, and no one took a bigger hit than Mike and with Dylan in the last 24 hours. Dude, it's too soon, man. It is way <laughs> too soon on you know this. What? Let's be honest with Dylan. Let's say this. You know, no, you I want to get back it. to Jane Bradley. It was something I was right about. No, you won't say it. I'm not making fun of you. You won't hey. say it, so I will. The reason it is disappointing from Mike's perspective is Mike invested a lot a in lot. Dylan. The coaching staff invested a lot in Dylan. More than I did. Right? Like, they were going to play him. Um, There's no hard feelings. Like, Dylan's close to Tommy. Dylan has known TJ Benson since they were, he was little, right? Right. And and so it's like we invested a lot. Like we trusted you, and it's not hard feelings. Like you get it at the end of the day. Dylan wants guaranteed minutes, but you know, like Mike spent the whole last year building up Dylan, and he'll never see it. I'll never see it. But again, man, just go to GCU so I can root for you there. Yeah. At least. Back to back to Dylan Brad or Dylan Bradley. Back to uh, Jaden Bradley for a second. Here's the other thing. I also think when you have a point guard that is tough, that is mentally, physically tough, I think that is something that is that kind of wears off on the team. Let's be honest. Kirk Kreese had talked a lot, was not a good was not a good defensive point guard. He was not leading the charge from there. Neither was Kylan Boswell. You watch Jaden Bradley. He's got his hands all I always say it. he's got he can block shots. He can uh, get in passing lanes. He is a disruptor. That is the best way that I can say it. He is a disruptor, Sheer. And that is, I think, something that is very difficult to uh, really quantify. Um, let's he, he's not perfect. He's not a perfect point. No, point-out. he wouldn't he's be in college if he was. Right? He's going to have some games where he struggles a little bit, but then he's going to have some games where he looks awesome. Like that mm-hmm. Clemson game, there were times where he was the best player on the court. Dayton as well. Dayton as well. Like they needed him. And then, you know, other games where he's not in, but it, it's time. Like I always say it, it's time. Like he deserves the look. Right. And, and, and I, I saw someone like basically insinuating there's always a scapegoat. Yes. There is always a scapegoat on Arizona. I don't know who it'll be next year, but a lot of times it's deserved in a way. Right. Like to me, Pella wasn't deserved. I thought that was a lot of the Pella hate. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. Pella. Pella. My bad Pella. Kylan, I get it, man. Because, and Tommy said it, Tommy goes, look, when you're the point guard at the University of Arizona, this comes with the territory. It just does. And so if you're coming to play point guard at Arizona, you better be well aware that there isn't one player on the roster that'll get criticized or scrutinized as much as you. And that's why you've got to be careful about how you conduct yourself. And that's where with Jaden Bradley, I don't worry about those things. Also, I think we're going to find out that Jaden Bradley is a better shooter than people think. I think that he is, uh, I look at it and I don't believe that he is a, uh, I don't believe he's a lost cause. All right. Somebody in here. And again, whoever this is should be banned, even though I very much appreciate you watching. Um, Oh, by the way, Erica flaming Carlos. Erica, I can't see. He blocked me. Erica, he blocked us. So screenshot it because Carlos, um, but, uh, where was it? Uh, Jane Brad. Oh, back to Jane Bradley for a second. Somebody just compared him to PJC. Come on, dude. PJs, they're, they're nothing alike. PJC was a guy that could bring the ball up the court and make an open three. That is the exact opposite. Uh, that is the exact opposite of what Jane Bradley is. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, but this is what I'm talking about. I like PJC. He's nothing like Jaden Bradley. There's literally no comparison whatsoever. Yeah, there's really, there's really no there's no comparison whatsoever. Jaden Bradley, I'm trying to think. What is 
What would be the the comparison? Small shed. We have already gone. No, through Arizona, this. an Arizona comparison. Reggie Geary. You never saw him, but Jer- Reggie Geary would probably be the closest one. Yeah. 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 Reggie, because you got the defense, not a great shooter. Jordan but- Mays. Jordan Mays. Oh, he's way better than Jordan Mays. Come on. By the way, I actually thought Jordan Mays was going to be really good. I did. Dude, everyone did. Year. What's that? Everyone did. Yeah, no, exactly. I thought that he was going to be really good. Either way, Jaden Bradley, we are very, very happy that you are uh, that you are uh, you are going to be the point guard. All right, now what is? Uh, let's see. This is good, good radio or good radio, exactly. Let's see what the great Erica Day is up to right no, now. No, that was funny. So I think we said this before, but we saw Carlos at the Pac-12 tournament and UCLA lost. He left for twenty minutes. He went back to his room and took off all his UCLA gear. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, and then he came back with two extra masks on as well. So, hey, uh, I was Erica, gonna go there, but yeah, <laughs> Erica, you should you should uh, you should post that. That was actually very funny. Kadeem <laughs> Allen, I don't hate Kadeem. I don't hate Kadeem Allen. That's not bad, actually. That's not They're bad. Built. I like Kadeem Allen. That's not That's bad. That's not bad. Right. I mean, that is not uh, that is not bad. Mike at Bibby. All. What about Mike Bibby? Oh well, I mean, you thought Nico Mannion was Mike Bibby. What a Shears worst takes ever! And again, That's I'm not what I said. <laughs> you always change this. You know, I said in terms. You said of the expectations. Expectations. They were both highly rated. All right, Mike Bibby was the second best player in the entire country, behind some guy named Kobe Bryant. Kobe. Yeah, but I'm just saying, Mannion was what we had him in the top ten. Sheer. Come on, you're better. I didn't say one was as good as the other. You just said expectations should be the same. Yes, no, in terms of ranking and stuff. Shira, I blame you from the beginning uh, on that. I, I, I'm not, I'm not at all happy with that. <laughs> Erica, post the, uh, post the. Erica, do as you're told. Yeah, I just, I, Erica, I'm texting you as we talk. Okay, now let's get back to some Arizona. Let's get back to some Arizona basketball and what all this means. I, uh, I am very, very intrigued by some possibilities, but we got to talk about KJ Lewis first. Um, KJ Lewis, I no, we no. need KJ Lewis under any circumstance to come back because. I worry about players like this declaring because I believe KJ Lewis is an NBA player. Not only do I believe that uh, KJ Lewis is an NBA player, I believe he's going to be a long-term NBA starter. I do not want, I am not thrilled with him declare if he declares for the draft sheer. I do not want him getting feedback. I hope that feedback sucks. So I, uh, I mentioned before like Boswell leaving, whatever, Bala leaving. I get it. KJ would hurt me. Yeah. KJ would, KJ would, Panic stuff on the right. KJ Lewis is that guy where if you were to say, damn, right? right. Uh, the worst case scenario is this is a Dale and Terry situation where he declares, everyone says he's coming back. Some school with the fifth, some school, some team with the 15th pick says, you know what? We're pretty damn good. Come, you know, come play for us. We'll develop you a little bit. We'll pay you. And KJ says, sure, why not? 15th, 20th pick, whatever. What was Dalen? Uh, like the 18th pick. Yeah, like that's that would be the nightmare scenario. Now, um, there is, from what I understand, there is less pressure for KJ to make that decision. KJ is saying all the right things and acting like he will come back. Mm-hmm. Um, he has technically not declared yet. Maybe he doesn't declare, but should he declare, it is with the intention of just getting feedback. But again, yes, it only takes one. Uh, I will say that they, they don't... Uh, they would be shocked if he entered the transfer portal. This is an NBA or Arizona thing. He loves Arizona. Um, look, I'm not going to tell you things are impossible, but as of today, if he declared, Arizona still thinks that he would come back. All right. Well, again, that's what we need because I want to talk about the perimeter here in a second. But like in Arizona, we have expectations. We are not ASU and the Jacob Franklins of the world. So again, sign up. But if you want to bet against Jacob Franklin, go to the BetMGM Sportsbook app. Sure. If there is a place where you could bet against Jacob Franklin, I would believe it would be on the. Uh, I would believe it would be on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. I always bet for and with Jacob Franklin. I'll never go against him. Oh, Jacob Franklin can be a real jerk at times, though. That's, but, That's what I've heard. The, very the, hard Jacob, to work with. That's what yeah, I've Jacob heard. Jacob Franklin is very difficult to work with at times. I've heard the word diva thrown around a few times. <laughs> Jacob Franklin a diva. Yes, this is yeah. very good. We spend so much time talking about Jacob Franklin on this show. <laughs> 
<laughs> but be like <laughs> the great Jacob Franklin and say that sign up for BetMGM, use bonus code PHNX, place your first BetMGM sportsbook wager through the BetMGM sportsbook mobile app for at least $10. You will receive up to 1500 bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for details. And now listen to Shane with the disclaimer. Bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369-NEW-YORK. Call one 800 327 Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP-ARIZONA. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. one 800 981 Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right. Now, one other thing. The BetMGM Sportsbook app. Or not the uh, Betham James uh, Parlay, as you can tell, I'm all over the place right now. All right. Well, which is this is what we do on this show. Uh, Sheer and I, we go through hours of prep and we throw it out the window the second that we come on the show. All right. Now, uh, Sheer, with uh, what is a good parlay to take? All right. I am going to pick. There's nothing left. I'm going to pick the Bucks out of the East. What? Pick the Bucks out of the East. And I am going to pick the Nuggets out of the West. There is my parlay. I'm looking at my DraftKings app. I have a draft. See? Oh, nice. You deserve that DraftKings app. Is that okay? Can I use DraftKings? I have BetMGM, too. All right. Well, yeah, as the, long as The odds are out. The odds are out to win the national championship. Oh, Arizona's year. got, what, the fourth best odds? Arizona's got the fourth best odds. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Arizona, 16 to 1. Horrible odds. Don't bet that. <laughs> Arizona 16 to 1. Although our good friend John uh our good friend John Brogan um believe was telling me yesterday, he says, Well, he says UConn, he says they're gonna really fall off next year. Yeah, they have the second best odds to win it. I if 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 I was seeing if I was looking at a one at one to bet that not that I think a win, but I think that you could get good money and good odds for Gonzaga at 25 to 1 is very intriguing. Uh, Gonzaga at 25 to 1 is interesting. Any chance that Umar Ballo, leader of men, goes back to Gonzaga? I don't it, I don't think they have the money, but Umar's literally, from what I told, is going to go to the highest bidder as long as it's not like some random ass school. And, like, can we please, and I, guess, I, I would not be surprised if Umar Ballo is the starting center at Arkansas next year. Seriously. If Umar Ballo, leader of men, was the best. Oh, by the way, was that finalized? Did, uh, did Calipari yeah. do? He just oh, did the good. He, he hasn't been announced yet, but he just did the goodbye Kentucky Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Yeah. I good, good call Jacob. But again, I'm going to redo a read Sheer, you, If we're staying on, we're, if we're staying on our subjects. We need to uh, stay on the subjects. Now the bet MGM sports book app, we will do this again and again, because again, we would stay on the bet MGM sports book app. That is all I use is the bet MGM sports book app. Sign up for BetMGM today. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM sportsbook wager through the BetMGM sportsbook mobile app for at least ten dollars. You'll receive up to fifteen hundred bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for details. Do we need to hear the disclaimer again? Let's hear the disclaimer again. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call eight seven seven eight HOPE NY four six seven three six nine New York. Call one 327 Massachusetts. Twenty one plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call one eight hundred Next Step Arizona. One bets off Iowa. One 981 Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See betmgm.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right, now again. I will also take the, uh, I'm still going to go with my pick. Sheer, you got me in trouble right there. Say nothing. I will take the Bucks and the, um, uh, who did I say? The Nuggets. There it is. Check it out. The BetMGM Sportsbook app. That is my parlay as well. Okay. Now, oh, real quick. We've had multiple people. Sheer, one person that I do know. Sheer, do you actively root against Arizona baseball? No, I don't. I'm not a big chip guy. They're having a very nice season. I don't root. There's only one time that I've ever rooted against Arizona, and we did it together. Yeah, we did do it together. Should we tell them about this? Yeah, so we we wanted Arizona to lose to get Kevin Sumlin fired. We rooted. We actively rooted against uh, Arizona to get Kevin Sumlin fired. We had to do it. It wasn't easy, but we had to do it. This was something where we couldn't go into next season uh, with – we just couldn't go into next season with – Kevin Sumlin, we did what we had to do. Basically, we, you know, we looked into the sun so but somebody else wouldn't have to. Yeah. Is that it? Is that a yeah. good one? Perfect. Yeah. 
All right, yeah, I think I think that's a pretty good one. Chip Hale, though, the Arizona baseball is in first place. Here's how I know Shear is rooting against Arizona baseball. Whenever Arizona baseball does uh, very poorly, Shear says, I was so right about this. And then when they do really well, I hear nothing from Shear. Let's say no, they're good. I just said it. Right. They're having okay. a great season. All right. Uh, Zeke Nagy should have stayed. I don't believe that Zeke Nagy should have stayed. He was a first round pick and he's in the NBA and he'll probably be in the NBA for 12 years. He's exactly who he is. I think people need to realize like being ready is meaningless. Stop. Right. Just stop talking about being ready. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Teams right. don't even draft on being ready. Right. It, unless you're bad. If you're at the bottom of the first round, you're not saying this guy's ready. You're saying this guy will be ready. Yes, exactly. All right. So that's just kind of where it's at. All right. Now back to the U of A roster. She, here's the thing with Shear. Shear's always trying to get me off track with everything. And I don't like it all the time. Now with the, oh, the Shear hedge, or does he do the notorious Shear hedge? The notorious Shear hedge is great, but I don't, yeah, I, don't I don't do it anymore. But at all fairness, where also Shear, where can they find you doing your work? By the way, your boards are on fire right now. Uh, wildcatauthority.com is on fire like you mentioned big time wildcat scoop podcast with shelby and at jason Shear on twitter okay now let's see mr tyler warden the great mr tyler warden okay so um do we worry at all about all right well we'll get to kentucky here in a second philly b utah state baylor for dylan Nah, we need that ba that's a bad fit for dylan baylor that way do not dylan's getting lost no, follow game. baylor dylan gcu oh yeah, yeah yeah okay cool boswell at alabama no Ooh. No. No, 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 no. Illinois. He's going to try to go to Illinois. What? He's going to uh, try to go to Illinois. That's he's going to try to go. All right. I would assume, you know what? We'll see how that works. I am curious how he and Brad, under, man, I have this fly that keeps flying into my nose and I have acted like a beast the whole time and haven't actually. All right. Um, With Boswell though, Illinois, that's interesting. He and Brad Underwood would be a very interesting, would be a very interesting dynamic. It might be what he needs. It could be. Absolutely. It could be what it needs. All right. How good? Let me ask you this. I'm just going to say theoretically a starting five. Dude, this is fine. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a starting. Hold on. Hold on. All right. I'm going to give you a starting five. Tell me uh, in your and Jason Shear's great mind where he, where you believe that this starting five would rank amongst starting fives in the country. Jane Bradley. Caleb Love, KJ Lewis, Trey Townsend, Mount Crevis. The floor is yours. Top 10. That's a top 10 team. 100% a top, top 10 team. Exactly. Let's talk about the bench now. We don't know who's on the wall. We got Henry on the he got Henry on the bench. You need a bench. You need to address that in a big way. All right. You've but we've also got some nice options on the perimeter as well. Uh, John Brogan calling me buzz off, dude. Um, Unbelievable. Look at this guy, dude. No, see ya. Sorry. Um, you should answer and put him on speaker. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Oh, don't trust that guy. <laughs> but Joson Sainon, Carter Bryant, Henry, Jamari Phillips. What do we think about that? Not oh. good enough. Yeah. It's not good enough. You need a veteran guy. You can't just have a bunch of freshmen inexperienced you, coming up. You need. That. You need a veteran. You need a veteran big, and you need a veteran backup point. We agree with this. Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, now you should be used. Oh, the, the, look at Michael Dorgan. This is not a that that is a cheap shot. Of Del Taco ball. is clean. Yeah, I, I don't really know why people. You know, people diss on Del Taco. All Do you know the first person to tell me about Del Taco cheeseburgers was it wasn't, it wasn't you. Me? Believe it or not, and and this is the greatness that relates to you. I don't think I've ever told you this. Ooh, Miles cool. Simon. When he was coaching at Arizona, told me that Del Taco cheeseburgers were the go-to. Jacob, this is the show clip right here. Holy moly. Dude, I've known you for 15 years, and you have yeah. never once told me this. We talk. This is ridiculous. We talk all day, every day. We share, you know, all that. Uh, and you told, you've you never told me this. Yeah, Miles, years ago, years ago, when he was here, said Del Taco cheeseburgers. We're under, because we had a conversation about cheeseburgers whenever we would go to Vegas. Uh, he could eat a double-double in like five seconds. I've never seen anything like it. And he said that Del Taco was one of his go-tos. 
All right. You know, Mel, Miles Simon's actually a really, really cool story because Miles Simon, I don't think I'm going to break any news here for anybody that knows. <laughs> sure. Miles, Miles Simon as a player was a colossal jerk, a yeah. colossal jerk. If I don't know that there's any less favorite player in the Arizona for at the time, maybe Joseph Blair, but it was Joseph Blair and Miles Simon. They were a Shelby had like Shelby had like an interaction with him when he was a student here and she like hated him for a, a while. Yes, exactly. He was not a, but again, he's definitely seems to have uh, matured. That's really nice he, guy now. Really yeah, nice. Yeah. Does he ever become a head coach? I hope so. I really think he could be a, 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 he'd have to get over some speed bumps to become a college head coach. But if Damon can do it. All right. I'm going to stick up for Chris Rogers here in a second, because you're right. But there needs to be more to the Chris yeah, Rogers. We discussed story. this last night. That's we did actually that's discuss this up. last night, but first, Let's see here. Uh, the Hewlett River Resorts and Casinos. We all know about the wave. The wave. Let, Sheer, let me see you do the wave. No, that's not how it goes. But again, the Hewlett oh, River, the Hewlett River Resorts and Casinos. All kinds of good people there, and good friends, good fellowship. Jacob Franklin is there for many. Jacob Franklin has been there many, many times. And again, the Gila River Resorts and Casinos. It's a fun, immersive experience. And you do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit play at Gila.com for more details. Hey, do you want to take care of that text that we just got? Or <laughs> No, that's what I told you you should have done. Hold on just a second. Uh, I will say real time. Okay, dude. Um, Simon will most likely be the head coach of the GR. All right, that's yeah, that's fair enough. Um, now, all right, now let's get back to a little bit of Arizona basketball because that's what we do. You got to get a backup point guard, I believe. As much as, uh, all right, well, then let's talk about somebody else. I get this question asked all the time. Literally all the time. Robbie Avila. Tell me why Robbie Avila is not an option for the University of Arizona. This I get I get a DM from somebody randomly almost every day saying Robbie Avila. Why not Robbie Avila? Bring in Robbie Avila. What is the case? Uh, why would you? They like Crevis. Avila's a center. Well, I don't understand. Could be a stretch player a little bit. <laughs> no. Do you know how bad that defense would be? Uh, yes, it would be really bad. Uh, look, I, I like Avila. Uh, right. He's solid. He's 6'10", 240. Okay. You know? uh, I don't think he's ever played a minute Ooh. at the four in Jake, his life. Jake Fagus says uh, Mitchell from Duke. Mitchell from Duke. Mitchell from I'm Duke. surprised you didn't bring up the power forward on Indiana State. Jason right, Kent. To, I, oh, I want to talk about fake shooting here for a second and what <laughs> this means. Kobe Thiel is the king of pushing fake yes. shooting. Um, now let's see here. Here's the deal with shooters and people, this young generation does not get this at all. And it is very annoying just because you have a bunch of dudes who shoot 38 to 41% from three point range, but they take two and a half per game does not mean that they are good three point shooters or that any team is going to change their strategy. On your board, there's a guy that they keep trying to push Xavier Amos on me. And Xavier Amos scored 14 points and five rebounds a game at, uh, what, Western Illinois or whatever. He shot four three-pointers a game. Absolutely nobody, is, no defense is going to change their right. mind about anybody who shoots three to four three-pointers per game. People need to understand this. So when I say, like, look at last year. Nobody cared about Keyshawn shooting threes. It was cool that he made a few. Nobody cared about Kylan shooting threes. It was cool that he made a few. Nobody cared about Pella shooting threes. It was cool that he made a few. That's what I'm saying, and this generation does not get this. There's guys that, like, if you go – Two for five from three, right? You shoot forty percent, but you're only making two a game, right? Who cares? Right? Like, here's a good one for you. What do you think Kylan Boswell shot from three last year? It was like thirty eight percent, thirty seven point three, right? Kylan Boswell averaged two threes a game okay. on less than five. He shot thirty eight percent. Is he taking you out of the zone? No, he's or not taking you out of it. No, that's not. There's very few guys in all of college basketball. So this that whole do that. this whole argument drives me just insane about shooting. Now, listen, there are players that there are. You know, if you want to bring me a Salim Stoudemire or heck, even a you know who I can, you know it was funny. Brogan and I were talking about this the other day. 
even a senior year Brendan Lavender, who never missed three pointers. Big game Zane Johnson. I just kidding. But th those that's not how this works. But that, it's just not again. Keyshawn Johnson is a cool story that he made 40% of his threes. Guess what? Nobody cared if he shot threes. Let's use Pella as an example. Again, Pella is a Pella. Listen, my bad Pella. But how many times do we see teams dare Pella Larson to shoot threes and he would pass them up or nobody was really extending out on Pella Larson, no matter the fact that he shot 42%. That's not how this works. I'm looking up three point dudes, three pointers made, right? So the leader in all of college basketball was Jack Golke, mm -hmm. right? That dude is getting me out of the zone. Yes. Out of the zone. Right, whatever. Like that guy. But then you look at like the good teams, Mike, right? You look at D1 guys. Let's just say D1s. I have this pulled up. The only D1 player, D1, mm -hmm. right? Or not D1, sorry. The only power five school and three pointers made in the top 10 was Blake Hinton at Pitt. And he was three of eight per game. That's it. Right. Yeah. Right? I, I Baylor Shireman from Creighton was 15th with three threes. Like, I don't know where this, holy crap, this dude is making, like, three. You know what it is? Three you know, a game. It's the leader in college get, basketball. These people, you know what it is? These people get so caught up in watching an NBA game. And they're like, oh, the analytics say I got a space. The NBA is totally different. Players in college generally can't shoot. So, I will be Here's this. The leader in the Pac-12 and three-pointers attempted, Mike, was hmm. Jalen Cohn. I don't know who that is. Correct. Who is Jalen Cohn? On Cal. The point guard. The, the dude that came from NAU. Oh, was he a little? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. He made three of nine a game. He's like 31%, but he averaged nine threes a game. That was it. This is very funny. Some guy messaged me about this guy, this guy message. Some, or was this about? Uh, oh, Dylan Anderson. This is mean. So I put out there. I said, uh, I said no. I said, you know, Black Monday and all of this stuff. And this guy says, he says, I have no real problem. He said, but he often looked confused when he did play. Oh, that's mean. Come on, he hasn't played in a year. Oh, you don't know that exactly. Yeah. Okay. By okay. the way, who do you think was second in the Pac-12 in three-point attempts per game? Somebody from ASU. Caleb Love. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Did Caleb get Love it. ever change the whole deep? I mean, maybe against Oregon. Right. But but again, but again you're going to be cool. Caleb Love, again, one thing with my uh, eyes. Oh, uh, Steve. Uh, let's see here. Steve Hernandez. Steve Hernandez, the great Steve Hernandez. Steve Hernandez, when he's not saying mean things about me in the YouTube comments about back in the A, is a very good official as well. We need ballers that can drive to the bucket and get rebounds, period, point blank. That is going to be our motto for the rest of time. Now, Caitlin Clark is brought up here. Here's what I'm going to say about Caitlin Clark. I know Be careful, nothing. Mike. Be careful. I know. I know. I know. I know nothing about the women's game. Really next to nothing. I will say this, though. And that is the best women's basketball player that I have ever seen by a mile. She doesn't move like a... Or she... Man, in this day and age, you got to be very careful. She she moves differently. She plays differently. The way that she uh, makes shots, the way that she can penetrate, the way that she dribbles, everything about her is different. She is just totally different than any other women's basketball player I've ever seen. What say you, Jason Sure. Uh, no, but she's very good. I don't think she's the best ever. I get why you would say she's the best ever. Right. Um, but she's very good. She might be one of the best shooters or the best shooter that I've seen. All right, now you're talking small ball, Mike. Oh, all right, uh, we will never hear from her. All right, uh, Joseph, I'll just say this. We're in day and age where people get very offended very easily about everything, so, and uh, that's all. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, now, where was I else going to go? Uh, let's see here. Gabe York is an interesting one. Gabe York was one of those heat check ones where – Gabe York was one of those heat check ones where he could shoot you out of a zone very, very quickly. That's an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but again, like, like what was it? Like Nate Oates against North Carolina, for instance. His whole defensive strategy against UNC on record was, we're going to leave Elliot Cadeau and Seth Trimble wide open, and if they both make a couple threes per game, so be it. Wow, this is very, very mean. Look at this. Look at this right here. Again, we talked about this yesterday and about who Arizona is. Again, there, there's multiple, multiple names, but 
Townsend is the one that I would be going after. I will allow you to uh, I will allow you to figure that one out. Guys like Kylan Boswell just entered the portal an hour ago. Like it's I don't have names for that. We we have names for some of the four guys that Arizona's looking at or some of the better four guys. But like look at today, the names that have entered the portal. Like right. Mark Mitchell entered the portal today. And I'm not saying he's going to come come to Arizona, but like there's dudes that are still entering the portal. Man, we're getting hit with strays left and right. I don't think we deserve any of these strays. As a matter of fact, we don't. Also, UConn. I ended up watching UConn last night. Danny Hurley is probably the best coach in college basketball as far as putting a roster together. I had a couple people that tweeted at me, very good people, much smarter people than me, but I disagree with them. And they said, well, you know, Arizona doesn't really have any players that I, because here's what I said. I said, UConn has literally no players that suck. Or they all those players contribute. They are all good. And I had somebody say, well, you know, it's kind of the way, same thing with Arizona. No. Arizona, how many guys, let me ask you this. Does Arizona have anybody that would start at UConn? Off merit, Caleb Love, he's not a right fit. He's not the right fit, but he's he's probably a better player. He No, he wouldn't start at UConn. That's I, I get the other type of dude. Let me ask you this. If you were to do a draft of players from UConn and Arizona, it's going to be like seven to three, eight to two, yeah. something like that. I mean, it's not that the, the, the difference in players is just, uh, it's just, it's remarkable. I mean, it, but again, that's, that's also an all time team. Dylan Dennis Walsh. That was funny. <laughs> we're just like, all yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. All right, we're going to end on this note. I believe I have all of the... Oh, PHNX, PHNX. No better time to become a diehard, my friends. Uh, check out the shirt. Put this up here. The shirt, this is very, very cool. The uh, This uh, BTFD shirt, very cool. Uh, again, you can get these right now. Go to go PHNX. Also, become a diehard. You will thank me later for all of this. These are new releases, my friends. Check them out. Okay. Okay. Um, it, uh, but on that note, uh, Kylan Boswell is out. We said maybe Dylan Anderson, maybe he took the sacrifice here. I don't know exactly, but you know, the sad day about Dylan Anderson, but Arizona is uh, Arizona is moving on. And, uh, that's what I got Sheer, What say you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's people wanted some movement. Here you go. Let's get started. Let's see what happens. We appreciate you all. We got up to almost 400 lives today. You guys are all fantastic. You're smarter than me, even the ones that are mean to me. But on that note, for the great Jason Shear, for the venerable Jacob Franklin, I am merely Mike Luke. We got Mulebach coming on tomorrow. What does that guy know? <laughs> You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. We all silly like the mayor. 